Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve our problem, remove nodes from linked lists. We're gonna go over two solutions for this problem. It's not super crazy complicated. We're given a linked list, something that might look like this. And basically we want to filter certain values from here. And by filter, I mean remove. And the rule is if any value here, five, has a value anywhere to the right of it, that happens to be greater than that five, well then we skip it. These two values both have 13 to the right of them. 13 does not have any value to the right that's greater. Three has eight, so we remove that. Eight does not have anything to the right of it at all, so we keep these two, and then that is the result. Ignoring the fact that this is a linked list, when you think about this problem, it's very classically a monotonic stack problem. The idea is that think about if we had a list that was like five, four, three, two, one. This is monotonically decreasing. In this case, equal matters like if this was five, five, and then three, two, one. These two are equivalent, I guess, in the context of this problem, because we're only going to remove a node if a value to the right is strictly greater than it, not greater than or equal. So equal in this case, I guess, is fine as well. This is the main idea behind this problem. Now, if we were to introduce another value to the right now, suppose it's a two. Well, that two is bigger than the previous value. So we would pop the previous value. It's not bigger than the next one, so we leave it as is. Now suppose instead of that we put a three here. Well in that case we're going to pop this and we're going to pop this. So this is why a stack is useful because we only need to look at the end of it. This allows us to make it pretty efficient like each operation is going to be a constant time. And as long as we're smart enough to make sure our stack is always monotonically decreasing or obviously like values can be equal as well if they're adjacent, then we can solve this problem really, really efficiently with a stack and basically ignore the fact that this is a linked list problem until the end. And at the end of the problem, we will take our stack and convert it back into a linked list. I'm gonna quickly just walk through like in 30 to 60 seconds how that would work on this example problem and then we're gonna code it up and then we're gonna look at a slightly more optimized solution. So suppose this is our stack. We go through the linked list, we just have like a current pointer or something and we just iterate over this linked list. We look at five, that's great, just go ahead and add five. Next value, two. So at this point we look at the two, we wanna add this to the stack. Should we pause the previous value? No, it's fine because these are monotonically decreasing. We can put five and two there. Now we get to 13 though. Before we can push the 13, we want to make sure that this stack stays monotonically decreasing because as long as we guarantee that, we're kind of solving this problem. We will be able to filter out the values that have a greater value after them. So basically, 13 is greater than two, so let's pop the two. It's also greater than five, so pop the five. And then after that, we can add the 13 here. Next, we'd see three. Three is not greater than 13, so this is fine so far. Then we'd look at eight. Eight is greater than three, so let's go ahead and remove that. But it's not greater than 13, so leave it as is. And then so this is the result of the problem. And so the only thing we do at this point is just iterate over the stack and convert it into a length list, which is pretty trivial, I think, so I'll just show that in the code. Okay, so now moving on to the code, I'm gonna create that stack I was talking about, and then we're gonna have like a current pointer starting at the beginning of the length list, and while the current pointer is non-null, let's iterate over the length list. Now, ultimately, what we wanna do is for the stack, we wanna append the current value to the stack, and then we want to shift the pointer to the next node. So this is very straightforward, but all this is doing is converting it into a list. We want to make it monotonically decreasing. So let's add a condition before all of this, while the stack is not empty and the current value of the node that we're at is greater than the previous value on the stack, which in Python you can get with negative one as the index. While this is true, then we will pop from the stack. We don't really care about the value that we popped. This is just the node that we are going to remove from the linked list. And then after all of this, let's convert it into a linked list. So for this reason, I'm gonna have a dummy 
pointer, and I'll kind of briefly explain why in case you're new to dummy pointers, I always get questions about this. So let me first show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have just a dummy node, and I'm gonna set current equal to the dummy, and then I'm gonna go through every value in the stack. And of course, we want to convert this value back into a node, and then we wanna add it to the end of our linked list, which we can get with current. So we're gonna say current.next is where this new node is gonna be inserted, and let's also not forget to move current to the next pointer. And then what I'm gonna return is dummy dot next because this is going to be the head of the linked list now why did i do it this way the alternative would have been something like this having head and let's call it new head or something the new head of like the result that we're going to return and if we do it this way you'll notice when you first start out you have to set this equal to null. So now when I am inserting this new node to the end of the linked list, I have to add an if statement to check. Right now is the head null? Because if it is, then we would just set current or we would set that new node into this position. But if it's not null, then we would do this, what I have here, current.next is equal to the new node. So to avoid that if statement, we're just using a dummy pointer. I know it doesn't save a ton of code, but I think it makes the solution more simple. And so this is the whole code. I'll run it to make sure that it works. Whoops, I had a very trivial uh, typo. This should be uh, to the next pointer. I'm pretty sure when I was talking about it, I said it correctly, but typed it out wrong, unfortunately. As you can see, the code does work. So this is a linear time solution. As you can kind of tell, we're going through the linked list once and then possibly a second time for the remaining values. But the space complexity is also big O of N from the stack that we are using. So big O of N time and space, we can get this down to big O of one space and big O of N time. Let me show you how we can do that. The idea is actually relatively simple. Suppose this is our linked list and just to exaggerate this and to make it really obvious, let's instead of this problem, let's assume we're given some global number. Let's say it's 10 and it may or may not exist in the linked list, but we want to remove every node that has a value less than 10. And so we do that and it's pretty easy to do that. We just iterate over the linked list and for every value, just compare it to 10. That's obviously linear time and constant space. The one issue we have is that this is not the same. For every single node, we will be looking at a different set of values. Like for this node, we wanna know if any of these is greater than five. And for this node, we wanna know if any of these are greater than two and et cetera, et cetera. It's just gonna keep kind of going like this, right? How can we know if there's any values greater than five unless, of course, we've gone through this entire portion? How can we possibly know that? And how can we know if there's any values greater than two unless we've gone through this portion? But if you see the order that we're going in, if we solve this left to right, we'll first have to scan through this part, then scan through this part, then this part, et cetera, et cetera. Now imagine if we were actually going from right to left, what would the problem look like? Well, for eight, we would ask ourselves, is there any value to the right of eight that is greater than eight? Well, there's nothing to the right of it, so this is fine, right? Now, what about three? We want to know, is there any value to the right of three that's greater than it? And yes, there is. There's eight. So I guess we can skip this. And so now we get to 13, we ask the same question, but how should we answer the question? Should we go back and scan through this to ask ourselves if there's a value greater than 13, or can we do something a little bit smarter and just maintain what the current max is if we're iterating from left to right? Notice, to answer this question, we have to go through this. To answer this question, we have to go through this. Wouldn't it be better if we solved this subproblem, then this one, then this one, and then finally the whole thing? I think so. That's how we're gonna solve the problem. But the main question at this point would be to answer how are we going to iterate in reverse order? Because we can't really do that. The best way would be constant space by just like duplicating this into an array or something like that. Well, if we're allowed to change the pointers, and sometimes it's not allowed, so it's always worth clarifying with your interviewer, but if we are allowed to modify the pointers, we can just reverse every single pointer 
in this linked list, and then we can accomplish what we wanted to. We can then filter out the nodes in linear time and constant space. And then once we're done with that, before we return the linked list, let's make sure to undo the reverse thing that we kind of did. So undo all of these reversals. So this is a linear time solution and constant space. Let's code it up. Since we are going to need to do the reverse a couple times, it's definitely worth creating a helper method for that. So this is, I think it's own leak code problem. So this is like one of the easy leak code problems. You can probably uh, look it up if you want, but I'll kind of gloss over this part we're basically reversing a linked list so just reversing the pointers i'm going to have two pointers maintaining the previous node which let's say is just going to be null and the current node which is going to be the head and then while the current node is non-null we are going to set current dot next equal to the previous we're just reversing the pointer then we're going to set previous and current to update it we're going to shift them to the right previous is going to be set to current current is going to be set to current dot next but how can we do that if we just changed it this is why we create a temporary variable so that's what i'm going to do here and then instead of assigning this to current dot next which we change over here let's assign it to Tem. Once this is done, we want to return the head of the linked list, like after it's been reversed. That is probably going to be where previous leaves off. Current is going to be null by the time this loop ends. Previous should be pointing at the head, so return previous. Now, just two things that we want to do. We want to first reverse the input that we're given. So we're going to assign head to the reversal of it. And then eventually we're going to return this linked list as well after we reverse it again so let's do this now before we can obviously do this we do have to filter out those values we have to remove those nodes how can we do that nothing super crazy let's have a pointer current and set it to the head of the linked list and let's maintain the current max which is let's say initially the current value that we're at so while this is i guess the like subtle part I'm going to say while not current, but current dot next, because first of all, with current, we're starting at the end of the linked list. And we know that we're definitely never going to remove that node. There's no values to the right of that node. So we can't remove it. There's not going to be any greater values. So we are currently at cur. Cur is not the candidate to be removed. Current dot next is the candidate to be removed. While current dot next is not null, we want to know is current dot next dot value less than the current max that we have seen so far, or is it not? Now, if it is, if this is the one that we want to remove current dot next, then let's just skip that node. So in terms of pointers, we can say current and set the next pointer to be current dot next dot next. So we're just skipping a node. And this is why we check for current dot next, but we still maintain a pointer to the current node because to remove current dot next, we need a pointer to the previous node so that we can update the pointer of that previous node. This is where we remove that node. That's great. In that case, the current pointer doesn't really change because current dot next is still changing. In the other case, things are going to change. We're going to shift our pointer. Current is going to be current dot next. And before that, we are also going to update our current max, actually, because if this is equal to that or greater than it, then we might as well down here say current dot max is equal to the current value or rather the current dot next uh, dot value, because that is what we are comparing it with. This is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. As you can see, it does. It's pretty efficient and it's definitely more memory efficient than the previous solution. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.